Hello world, this is Shruti Pandey and uh, pardon me if I get an, a little nervous or a little more excited today because today I have with me James Buckley. What say sales? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Thank you so much for having me. This oh, is great. Gosh. Oh gosh, I mean seriously, I'm going to sound a little more crazier today or a little not myself because uh, should I call it like a fangirl moment or something? But yeah, and not even being in direct sales. Still, I I I I see you guys, you uh, James, uh, Morgan, Ingram. The way people follow you all in India is insane, and the way they get inspired. I hope they learn at least a percent or so from you guys, and it would be so much, so much, so much better for all of us here. Really. That's amazing. Uh, we we love the the Indian culture and the things that that they bring to the table. I think that people have the wrong impression about what it is to be a seller in India. It's a different world out there, you know. Uh, but it is also a very caring and supportive environment in a lot of cases. So we love everybody that follows us from India. We have great conversations, technically, spiritually. Like the people there, the culture there is truly remarkable. Yeah. Yeah, you you won't you won't believe in my head. I think of you and John's uh, basically like uh, uh, writing the newest testament of sales bible. That's how I perceive you two guys. And you that's you, actually not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, that's how I, I look up to you both. And uh, you kind of went really close to my first question, which is about perception of sales. You know, uh, because typically in India, I'm not sure if it happens like a world worldwide phenomenon, but the way sales is perceived, uh, and what can we do about it? Really, about the perception of sales. I, I think that people are finally starting to wake up. I think we are in the middle of the beginning of the revolution. The revolution shift is that people are realizing they have to care about what they sell and who they serve. It's become less of a Wolf of Wall Street boiler room mentality, and it's become more of a pursuit of happiness, Tommy boy person, right? That's the people that are succeeding in sales today. We're learning that we have to not only provide value, but we have to be authentic human beings to make an impact on our prospects. And the folks that are top performers don't really sell. What they do is provide a path to a decision. And that's really the crux of the change that we're seeing today. And the reason that change is happening is because everybody has a situation where they were sold something and they didn't like it. They were approached aggressively. They were con convinced or persuaded to buy something that really they were questioning whether or not they needed it, right? Okay. We've all had that experience. That sleazy slime ball salesperson persona, if you will, is becoming a thing of the past. And I think we are all relieved to see that as being the case. It's very refreshing to get a phone call these days from an SDR, from an AE that understands what you do, has a strong opener, is relevant, and is excited to deliver great value to you. It's refreshing. When you start hearing that from people, this is refreshing. Thank you very much. You've done a great job as a seller, and we're seeing more of that these days. Wow. Wow, this makes this makes total sense because until unless you are convinced to sell something, how do you really sell it? And mm. I think it's attaching purpose to selling, not just uh, hitting a quota or target or a number. Maybe I, I wish that happens more, so that we see a a better perception of sales, probably. Well, the stigma is becoming um, very obvious. I think I think we recognize somebody that's not being authentic much sooner in the conversation. Mm -hmm. I have a, a personal branding course that I do. And I talk about this a lot. Everybody's been at a restaurant before and they sit down at the restaurant and somebody comes to the table and they're like, hi, my name's Megan. I'm going to be your server today. Can I get you anything to drink? And you're like, hey, no one talks like that, Megan. Don't talk to me like that. Right? Like, it's, it's not... Don't be that <laughs> fake authentic person. Hello, my name is Robert and I'm calling to share with you that we are starting a new project on Sounds like this. a AC's English movie, but yeah. I you're like, you're like, is this recorded? <laughs> like, what is that, right? Like these things are becoming a thing of the past and people yeah. that are starting conversations off with, hi, is this Shruti? Hi, Shruti, thank you for taking the call. Do you have a moment before your next meeting? 
these people are getting the time. They're more authentic. They're more human. They're having real back and forth conversations. It's not just connect and pitch. Yeah. I mean, just my last episode where I was talking about community building, exactly we had stuck the same chord where uh, I was like, you can't really fake such a thing. Be it trust in community building or sales or whatever. The, the moment you start to fake, it shows. And you, you shouldn't be thinking the other person or somebody on the other side is, is a fool or something because they know. <laughs> even, even shoppers that are in the market for what you're selling will run away screaming from you if you are acting like a robot or going through motions that they don't care about or demoing features that they didn't ask for. You, we have to adjust the way we sell to match the person we're selling to right. instead of forcing the sale on somebody that we know very little about. Oh gosh, I, I hope someday you visit India and I'll try to show you around Mumbai because most shopkeepers in Mumbai, the way they do sales is, is just remarkable. People should just go to these shops and understand from them how to do sales. Like uh, for the beginners here in India, the, the, the way a, a, a normal shopkeeper uh, does the sale that you come out buying things which you didn't even need because you just felt good about the way you were treated in that shop and he's like yeah I think I can buy this also oh, okay I'll get that too and stuff like that it's just insane it is insane but cultural differences are around for a reason there is a specific reason why selling out of India is different than selling out of the United States and the UK and Germany right it all that's why cultural knowledge is so important, uh, religious knowledge so important. It fills in the gaps for the types of people that we come in contact with through our day-to-day -day lives. Knowing those backgrounds and those beliefs help us to relate. And relate is so important. Relativeness, so important. Relativity, so important when you are in sales. Because if you can't be relative, no one cares. <laughs> I went everywhere with this one question, uh, but my second question is uh, something which I feel uh, very strongly about, and let me know if, I, if you want me to repeat it. Does being in a stressful target meeting job give salespeople the right to yell at other team members? Hmm. Um, I think we all accept the fact that sales is a stressful job. Yeah. But the way that we manage stress impacts those around us in a large way. I don't think anything gives you the right to yell at colleagues, coworkers, people. I don't think there's an excuse for that. If you need to have a private conversation, that's fine, but it should be done in a professional and maintained manner, right? When we lose our cool, it speaks to our weakness. It speaks to the fact that we have a difficult time controlling our emotions. And that is usually something that loses followership it, followership, it loses credibility. Uh, it forces us to be viewed in a different light by those around us. And you never want to catch the label of somebody that's a hothead, somebody that loses their temper quickly, someone that yells and screams. Once you catch that label, it's really difficult for you to have good relationships with people around you. And you have to have positive relationships if you'd like to move forward. You can't have a negative relationship with everyone in your office and expect to be promoted, supported, taught. That's not a realistic perspective. So no, I do not think that working in a stressful environment gives anyone the right to be a hothead or yell and scream at employees, colleagues, coworkers. That's not okay in the, in the current modern selling work environment forget selling like generally speaking in business this is not an okay environment to have right and how can they handle this because i i know the answer is definitely this is not uh, permitted but how mm -hmm. if there, there are people like that and, and i'm sure you would know most of the people uh so how, how do you think can this situation be avoided or uh, mm. tip to handle such situations so for frontline people specifically, people that function below the power line, if, they, if you are constantly seeing people get yelled at, getting yelled at, and you feel like you're approached aggressively at work, there's a choice that we make every day, whether or not we want to be employed by that company, that person, that team, or we want something new. If you can move departments and not be a part of that environment anymore, then great, stay at that company, move departments, find where you fit and where you're happy. But if you can't, 
maybe it's time to look elsewhere and find that job that you fit the culture of so that you're not in a aggressive environment anymore. Life is entirely too short for us to spend it working at an organization we are unhappy with. It's eight hours a day, our entire lives. <laughs> eight to 10 to 12 hours a day, depending on your work ethic, it's a lot of our lives. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're getting something out of it and feel like you're getting the satisfaction that you need because that's what keeps us coming back. Yep. Uh, you see people that um, come into the office and they just, they have that body language that says they're exhausted and they hate their jobs and they can't believe they have to come here every day. Yep. I never want to be that person. I'd much rather be the person that wakes up early because I'm excited. Like, I always get excited because I'm like, <laughs> what's going to happen today? <laughs> oh, I know that feeling. Yeah, that's wow. Thank you. Thank you for summarizing it all so well. And I think life indeed is too short. That's the one thing that pandemic taught us all. My, my last question to you is, uh, what do you think about the future of sales and community building or the impact of community, community building with sales? Uh, well, you know, they say the next Buddha will be a Sangha. So we'll see if it happens. Uh, I'll be interested to see if a collective mind forms. Right now, we're seeing a lot of communities out there. There's Rev Genius and SDR Nation and, you know, um, uh, the Sales Rebellion, um, yeah. Sales Cast, right? There's like so many different Slack channels. You know, when they say community, they're the communities, they're Slack channels, they're literally existing in uh, um, Discord, right? Like, uh, Facebook groups, uh, LinkedIn groups, communities have been around for a very long time, but it's a matter of their sustainability and how long they function and then how they disseminate their influence that makes the biggest impact. So I'll be interested to see how the sales community at large comes together as a unit, as a single cohesive unit to elevate the sales profession and remove the stigma of being in sales. You see a lot of people out there whose titles are growth ninja and, you know, growth hacker. And, yeah. you know, yeah. they, they don't, they don't come right out and say, I'm a salesperson. The only group of people that you see that are able to carry this with pride are the people that have the label of sales development representative, yeah. account executive, account manager. Yeah. You don't see a lot of people out there that are wearing the flag. Good flag. I've, got, I've got it right here. I want that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> This came from uh, Factor 8, and it's from uh, Lauren Bailey, and I got it in Chicago when I saw her speak. We have to be proud that we're in sales uh, because it's our job, it's our function, and it's how we help people. It's our vehicle to help others succeed. That's the real label that salespeople are going for, right. or at least that's the label I believe they should be going for. You're not a salesperson, you're a sales professional right? You're not a sales rep. You're a human being that helps other people solve problems and improve certain scenarios. That's the function of a seller in 2022. So the community coming together, I'll be very interested to see how we come together as one and share that with our community as a whole. I hope so that happens, right? Because, uh, I mean, I've been talking about this on and off on LinkedIn or maybe commenting on a couple of posts where I, I mean, I've just been uh, with the salespeople three years in my life as a solutions engineer or pre-sales or whatever fancy names they call you. Uh, but uh, what, I, what I really feel about sales is everybody is a salesperson really. The moment I get into an interview for a job, I am a techie, but the, the moment any person gets to, into an interview for any job, you are basically selling yourself, your skill or something or the other. So it, it shouldn't be stigmatized in such a way that we are like, oh my God, sales. Well, I don't think the stigma is that we feel that way. I think the stigma is that people that don't consider themselves salespeople feel that way. And nowhere is this more obvious than when we are shopping for a new car because we have the money. We want the car. We are looking for the car. We're actually getting in and out of different cars at mm -hmm. the lot. And then we see the salesperson come and they look at us. And our immediate thought is, shit, I got to get out of here before this guy talks to me. Like, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want this person to talk to me. And I just think this is the funniest phenomenon mm -hmm. that's happened in, the, in recent times, right? Because like that stigma of, here comes this sleazeball car salesman. 
that's the thing that has to get removed from our society on the outside because it can't be removed from the inside. It's easy for every salesperson to say, I'm not a sleazy car, a car salesman type of guy. Yeah. Every salesperson in the world, male, female, doesn't matter. They will say, I'm not that kind of seller. Nobody is like, oh yeah, I totally lie to my prospects. Nobody. Nobody's like, oh yeah, no, I totally will say anything I have to, to get the clothes, anything I have to, right? No one says these things. And yet that's the stigma. And it's because at one point in time, that's what it was. That's what it used to be. Now it's changing to be more customer centric. So the customers have to embrace that. They have to turn around. Nobody, everybody always talks about how the sales process is, is like broken. No one talks about how the sales process, the buying process is broken, right? The buying process, the seller has to change, but the buyer has to change with the seller. And that's a hard relationship to manage. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Understandable. I mean, the, the moment we also become a buyer, we also become the same person, right? Like how we meet our customers or prospects, really. This is one hell of a conversation. If I may ask you one bonus question, James, if that's okay to do. Go for you're, it. You, you're, my, you're one of my favorite humans. I feel like asking this question. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you are. Let's do it. Okay, so my, my bonus question is um, health. Because I, I literally have not taken care of myself and all the while that I've been working. And again, sales is a very fast paced life. What would you advise to youngsters, elders, I don't know, the mid group, whatever, like how can one take care of themselves and health really in any job in this, in this crazy world, maybe for that instance? Yeah. Yeah. So actually this is a great question to focus on two groups. One is the group of frontline people that are out there living in this world and doing this job. And two is the leaders that manage those people. So I'll talk to both groups separately and give both groups advice. For the leaders, first, ease up. <laughs> it's a long walk. You might have SDRs that have been with you for six months. You know what that means? That means they're halfway through being truly ramped. If you're expecting greatness six months after you hire somebody, you are not being realistic about the knowledge gap. It takes a year just to learn the language, just to learn the progress, just to learn the ICPs, the personas, the industry, the vertical, the product itself, the support, the path, all of it, the language that your prospects use, everything. It takes a year just to get there. And yet we expect people to be hitting quota in three months. And that's just not realistic. Take the walk with your people instead of trying to pull them forward as fast as possible. That's not realistic. So there's my leadership rant. For frontline people, do not think that your success will come overnight. Stop it. This is not a swipe right job. This is a career. And anything you ever really gave a shit about took time, effort, consistency, learning, anything. Doesn't matter what it is. So don't come into the role if you're six months in, if you're a year in, thinking, gosh, I should have been promoted by now. I think I'm going to quit. Don't do this. Slow down. Start learning from the ground up. The more you know, the more effective you can be. The best frontline sales reps do less better. And that's why they're successful. Thank you so much. Uh, for me, at least with just these questions that I asked you, you did write the newest testament of sales Bible for me. Thank you so much. I, I hope people uh, who would listen to this or watch this video uh, get the best uh, education about sales and concepts that we talked about today, because literally with every question, we went around the world every single time and you have answered so many of, you know, the subtopics uh, with every single question. So thank you so much, James, for doing this for me. And in case you have any parting thoughts, uh, we'll be really honored to hear you once again. Parting words. <laughs> it's not our job to convince or persuade people that they should buy what we have. It's our job to sell what we have to people that need it. That's my parting words. Oh, one more. You'll never grow. You'll never grow professionally until you're willing to grow personally. 
it's so simple yet so effective and profound and if people you don't understand it the first time please rewind and listen it's a video you can do that thank you so much james thank you so much such wise words it means a lot to me thank you my pleasure thank you for having me thank you